Today, we're catching up with David Chavez, PhD candidate in history at UCR and adjunct professor currently at Pasadena City College. So David, can you tell us about your research? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Elliot, for having me on. Uh, yeah, my work looks at the history of youth policing in Los Angeles from 1945 till 1987. And what, I'm, uh, what my research tries to do is look at a genealogy of the criminalization of youth of color. How is it that the city of LA, which is known as the innovator really for youth policing and just policing in general, how did it transform the bodies of young people, specifically black and brown bodies and also immigrant bodies too, from being uh, using the terminology in the 1940s and 50s as delinquents, then moving into gangs. And then by 1987, using the term street terrorist for which to talk about young people. And so I explore those by looking at a couple different sites, uh, including law enforcement, including uh, educational uh, systems like the Los Angeles Unified School District, the probation department, and then also think tanks uh, within the university system of Southern California. Mm. So how does your research relate to the current pandemic? Well, I think it, it definitely intersects a lot with the current pandemic, in particular with the questions of policing and surveillance. Right now, the, 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 in the news, um, local policing, and in particular, the type of policing that's happening in New York against uh, Black youth and, and, and Black communities in particular, but also Black and Latinx communities, in which law enforcement is really targeting and cracking down on social distancing, quote unquote social distancing within those communities while um, as uh, juxtaposed to them passing out masks in more affluent and more white neighborhoods in New York. There's some, you know, there's a couple viral videos and pictures of that happening. And so my, I think my research really interconnects to that and the ways in which law enforcement and policing is op often the response from the state in terms of crises whether it be economic crises or in this current moment, a health crisis, a pandemic. And the response is to um, invigorate the state forces like law enforcement and begin to then um, deploy those to certain communities to, to enact their, you know, this type of these types of violences. And we're seeing this replicated and more and more as the economy is now being forced to open up against the, the wishes of, uh, of many uh, experts in the public health field, more and more this will be, uh, utilize the state will begin to utilize things like law enforcement and surveillance in the terms of contact tracing and so forth. So my work, I think, really intersects. I think there's a lot of lessons we can learn from um, that type of language and um, that was being utilized during this time period in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s to what that's going to mean for us today, that a lot of things we're seeing are not new manifestations or not novel manifestations, but are historical manifestations of, of the type of state violence towards uh, oppressed communities in the United States. And so we're seeing that replicated here, I think, today. So how has the pandemic affected your teaching? Yeah, I think the pandemic has is, is definitely been a big shift for, for me. And personally, I, I'm a, a community college professor right now. I teach one class uh, part-time. I'm adjunct. Uh, and I teach at Pasadena City College. And it was very tough. In the middle of the semester, week four ended with uh, me sending an email to my students. Hey, we're not meeting on Monday. And all these mixed messages, to be honest, like the university's like, we're going to have a soft opening. We'll, we'll still be open for a couple of days. And then over the weekend, it was like, nope, no, 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 no. And so it was a lot of back and forth. So it's been tough to, to be able to, uh, to be able to adjust to an online format, not only for me um, in terms of having to scale up um, and scaffold up my lessons to be able to transfer them into the uh, more virtual or distance uh, education environment, but also too, really for my students. Having them, uh, the first thing I did, I, I sent out a survey to students to say, hey, do you have Wi-Fi? Do you have a, do you have a uh, unlimited uh, data plan? How do you get your internet? Do you, do you have a, your own laptop at your house? Do you share that laptop with other relatives? And so it was a, really taking stock. And right away, you notice, uh, you know, for the, at the community college uh, where I teach, but I, I would say this is very true for other HSIs or, um, you know, uh, community colleges and other universities that serve a lot of working class or uh, students of color, that access is a big thing to, uh, to being able to, to take online courses. You have to be really um, set up to do that. And it's been very tough. Um, many of my students um, have had issues, um, you know, in trouble. So what I've done, the best thing to do is really adjust. I I've been really being informed by this concept called universal grading by some uh, colleagues 
and, and uh, folks within higher education. One uh, person is, it was, it's this essay that was written by two folks, one from Cal State LA and the other one uh, they teach at the Claremont Colleges. And they argued and I 100% agree that it's, it's not business as usual, that we have to really be there for our students and the pandemic takes, um, takes uh, primacy or over like the way we see grading and, and we should really put that into account. That's why I got rid of my final. I got rid of the second essay for the course and I made it a more of a connecting the history we're learning about. I'm teaching history um, of Mexican Americans or Chicanx history um, in the 20th century. And I basically changed the final assignment to say, how does the lessons from, uh, from the, the Chicanx community and experience of organizing and facing racism and, and, and patriarchy and all these things, colonialism here in the US, what are some of those lessons that we can learn uh, for today and dealing with the, the issues at hand in our communities in particular, this pandemic. So it's, that's been one of the positives like, to really take, which is a big no-no sometimes for historians to talk about the present, but um, I, I think it just made sense. And uh, universal grading is something that I really endorse and it's been helping me. And I believe my students, uh, we went from 40 students uh, at the beginning of the pandemic and I still have 37 students who are sticking with me in this course. And it's really about meeting them where they're at. Deadlines, you got to get rid of them. I mean, that's, that's been the biggest help, but that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's been it for teaching. Cool. Well, any last words of advice? Yeah, I think um, continue to follow the, the, the expertise of uh, public health professionals and those uh, who are, you know, telling us to, to really be cautious. I am really, uh, I, I would say for everybody, reach out. This is the time that many of us have been waiting for in terms of organizing or saying, you know what, if I was alive during the civil rights movement or during, during, alive during slavery, alive during apartheid, alive, alive during these very big moments or conjunctures of, of strife and crises, this is our moment now. So get involved in your mutual aid networks uh, for folks listening in who may be in, uh, near UCR. Um, you can definitely hit up uh, uh, my, uh, one of my uh, committee chairs, uh, Dylan Rodriguez, who's been involved in the Riverside uh, uh, Mutual Aid Network that's actually started by alums from UCR. So mm -hmm. get involved there, support your neighbors, check in on your fam. And yeah, mask up when you're outside, take your precautions and, and stay safe as much as you can. Cool. Do you want to give a shout out to your podcast? Yeah. So yeah. And if folks like what they're hearing on my end, you can check me out uh, on my podcast. It, it's called Nacho Nostalgia. You can uh, check us out. We're, um, we're right now um, on the Anchor Podcast uh, Network. You check us out. We got two episodes in the can, myself and, and my comrade, uh, Kazer, who's uh, who who's who works in the multimedia field and advertising, and we're kind of just looking back at the '90s and asking ourselves, did, was that culture? Um, you know, things like uh, being around for the release of the movie The Matrix, or or even things like uh, Nickelodeon. <laughs> did that uh, did that help us prepare us for this decade beginning with the pandemic, or has it doomed our generation? So come and check us out on uh, Nacho Nostalgia. Cool. Well, David, thank you so much. And I will see you soon. All right. Thank you, Elliot. Take care.